something but pint-sized. Pee Wee Herman is the star of two movies, one television show, and he has his own line of toys. But who is Pee Wee Herman? That's a tough assignment. Tonight, a few glimpses of the man behind the kid. Who is Pee Wee Herman? <laughs> He's Paul. <laughs> this is someone I grew up with, so it's always with great amusement that we watch Pee Wee, but he's Paul. <laughs> you see a little bit of the real Paul come out in the Pee Wee, ah! but I, I know, I know the real Paul. <laughs> His real name is Paul Rubens, but most people know him as Pee Wee Herman, America's favorite nerd. Good morning. I'm here. Who doesn't recognize the trademark too small suit, the powder puff makeup job, and his famous red bow tie? <laughs> his first feature film, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, catapulted him from cult status. I meant to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, Pee Wee Turbo! To star status with appearances on The Tonight Show and Saturday Night Live as a guest host. His morning television show, Pee Wee's Playhouse, was designed to attract kids on Saturday morning, but soon grown-ups were hooked. It's something about the show's wacky humor and zany cast of characters. But who is the man behind the kid? It's no secret that Pee Wee is really an actor named Paul Rubens. But who is Paul Rubens? He's a man who doesn't like to be photographed without his Pee-wee makeup on. And Paul Rubens has never granted a television interview. So, the hunt was on for people in Paul Rubens' past who could tell us who he is and where Pee-wee came from. His identity might be a secret now, but was it then? Give me a break! The eldest of three children, Paul grew up Paul Rubenfeld in Sarasota, Florida. Paul was very quiet. Very serious, highly dependable. Ruth Beisel was Paul's sixth grade teacher at Southside Elementary School. He uh, had such a deep voice for such a little boy. This always impressed me. I just wondered where it all came from. What's going on around here? Susan McGarry was a classmate of Paul's. He was always small, and I remember that he used to compensate for his smallness when he was, when he was perhaps teased or bullied by some of the bigger boys by using his mouth. You're a nerd. I know you are, but what am I? You're an idiot. I know you are, but what am I? I know you, you are, are, but what, what am I? I? I know you are, but what am I? From elementary school plays, Paul went on to perform at Oslo State Theater in Florida and Northwestern University's summer program for gifted students. Elizabeth Rapolsky was Paul's high school English teacher. Most of the time I remember him in his white starch shirt and dark blue pants, belted because that was a rule, socks because that was a rule, and not being a nerd but being a perfectly well-adapted young man. We also found out that besides acting, Paul dabbled in poetry. This one reminds me of Paul and what he's become today. It's kind of ominous. Just like a fortune, I gathered up my youth and then I spent it. And you know he's reliving it now, I swear. And what about Paul's social life? Well, back in junior high school, he was something of a ladies' man. There was Diane, now Mrs. Diane Weiss. She recalls her first and last date with Paul Rubenfeld. Oh, it was very romantic. We held hands, I'm sure of that. Uh, sweaty palms. That probably was the, the reason we never went out again. We held hands. There was Susan McGarry, now an Episcopal priest. Uh, during sixth and part of seventh grade, Paul and I went steady. I still happen to have the bracelet that Paul gave me. Then in the ninth grade, Paul met a bubbly blonde named Regina Clark. Oh, yeah. Paul loves Gina. Gina loves Paul. You know, that, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, notes back and forth between the classes. Their puppy love gradually led to a party and the first kiss. I mean, Paul's first kiss. Pee-wee's first kiss. I had my arm around his neck. And he says, I'm going to kiss you. 
And I thought, oh my God, you know, this is, this is great, you know. So, you know, the girls are always more mature at that time anyway. So he put his arm around me and I closed my eyes. And <laughs> when I opened my eyes, he had put cellophane across his lips. And I said, Paul, I said, don't, don't fool around. I said, now, do you want to kiss me or not? See what I mean? I mean, he was, he was funny then. Naked gummy! Naked gummy! <laughs> I think a lot of what he does now evolves, you know, over a period of time. Okay, this right here is a little frog. It's not that funny. Okay, you just, you know, uh, Okay, but look, when you turn over, look. always used to make funny noises, okay? I mean, talk in weird voices. Hello, everybody! Not your normal average guy that you would date. I mean, you could not get him to put his arms around you and dance. Fast dance? Never. He would not dance. And, you know, and I, I used to say, please, you know, I mean, come on, everybody else is dancing, please. So he would act the fool then, you know, get up and be a clown, which was perfectly all right. But, you know, his crazy dance, I swear, that's how that evolved, because he didn't like to dance. And now he makes millions dancing like a fool. He may have hated to dance then, but Paul Rubens danced all the way to the bank with Big Adventure. The $6 million movie cashed in more than $70 million at the box office. With a sharp eye, you might have caught a glimpse of Paul Rubens before he was Pee Wee. We hunted down this rare footage of a masked Paul on the gong show. His act one, by the way. Yeah! The winner is Catherine Hepburn! Oh. This is Paul Rubens playing a high school nerd in the Mork and Mindy TV show. And this is Paul Rubens as a waiter in the Blues Brothers movie. We have a Dom Perignon, 71 at $120. That'll be fine, pal. Paul Rubens' identity is so secret, even his colleagues have trouble recognizing him. Eric Herman was the animation producer for the first season of Pee Wee's Playhouse. I went into the room, and uh, I said, when's Pee Wee getting here? And uh, that was to Pee Wee, who had... Uh, curly hair, a goatee, who's wearing glasses, a t-shirt. I think I detected a tattoo on the left arm. And I thought, you know, man, that's weird. <laughs> when you're talking to Paul, he seems almost to have no energy. And you're wondering where the hell this uh, Pee Wee character comes from. And all of a sudden, you know, someone will walk into the room and you'll see a little and then he'll go back to his Paul Rubens composure, but you see the little bits of Pee Wee sneaking out. For all its inventiveness, Pee Wee's Playhouse turned out to be the most expensive children's show in history. Costing more than $300,000 an episode to produce. While Pee Wee appears kooky on camera, Look! A turban! <laughs> behind the scenes, he's all business. Mike Hartenstein was a high school classmate of Paul's. In high school, he, he portrayed roles in theater that were serious roles. Um, today, he portrays a character that's anything but serious. But I think Paul approaches that in the same serious way that he's always approached theater. And I think he's a perfectionist. So who is Pee Wee Herman? His former school buddy, Reed Farrell, now an Episcopal priest, sums it up best. I think that that Pee Wee is the child that's in all of us as grown-ups. That most of us aren't willing to let out. And Paul's found a way to let, let that out. But at least one person wishes that Paul would just grow up. I just hope that I live long enough to see the day that Paul is that serious Shakespearean actor that he always wanted to be. Shakespeare will have to wait because Pee-wee is busy working on a Christmas special and on new episodes of Pee-wee's Playhouse. Pet